All right, welcome back to Turning Farms, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are working on bedding cattle before this big storm comes in. Right now it's in the upper 40s, but it's windier than hell out here, so it's cold. It's cold wind chill, so so to say. But it's gonna get in a couple hours, two three hours, it's gonna drop. It's gonna get cold fast. It's gonna drop and get 30 degrees at least. It's supposed to be high of what eight degrees tomorrow or something. So yeah. So we're working on Ben cattle right now. It's not too bad in here, but we're gonna do it. That side's worse, you can see. It's when the out barn doors are blown out everywhere. But, my glove's falling out of my pocket. Let me sit down over here and funk. Here's one of my heifers there. Angus Holstein Cross. Her name's Missy. So, I'll push these guys out. I don't have anyone to operate gates for me today. So, I'm by myself, Dad. Filling up the other winter spreader so we can get done quicker before the wind starts coming from the north. Because right now it's coming from the south, which is that that way north behind me. So once the wind starts coming from the north, it's gonna get cold. I gotta grab my glove. So yeah, I'm gonna bed this pen here, and I'm gonna bed this pen here. It's still old per pen. Put the old manure spreader over here. So crawl over the bunk here. I'll probably push silage since I'm here anyway. I gotta push silage along these bunks here. But we'll do that when I'm done. So I gotta chain these gates here and then we'll come back to you. Alrighty, so we're spreading the bedding out now. So this spreader, the apron is ran by an orbital motor because the gearbox down there that runs the apron is wore out. So we just shoved a orbital motor on there. So basically the only thing the PTO drives here is a beater which I would like to take out so then we can, you know, just haul wood in this thing and whatnot and bedding, but the nice thing about the beater is it spreads all the bedding out for the most part. Got the 400 on here obviously, hydraulics work pretty decent on here, I'm at half throttle right now or so. Yeah. I wish this thing went faster, but it is what it is. I'm not complaining. I could be doing it by hand. See, so yeah, it takes about a spread of load per side here. There's about, I don't know, 70 to 80 head. Maybe not quite that much. We moved quite a bit out. But yeah. We've been them outside because we try to keep them outside. So here comes Dad and the fall and the other manure spreader. I was gonna say the other bedding spreader, but that's our manure spreader. Good old 195. Uh, thing looks nice after I give it a good wash. It won't stay like that for long though. I'm feeling sprinkles, so it's gonna start raining here soon, I guess. It's not supposed to rain until six to nine. It's just past one o'clock. Oh so, yep. Yeah, put you guys down for now. All right, we finished bedding cattle for today. If you look over yonder, I don't know if you guys can see it, but Dad's on the field there at the 86, messing around with the GPS. Go figure. We're up here by the shed in the hill. This is hauled out. Manure was hauled out and bedded yesterday. We didn't do that. My Uncle Ben and Brant did that. Um, there's about 100 or so head cattle in this pen. And this shed here isn't the best. It's it seen as better days. I like to take it down. It's got a good foundation. It's just, well actually there's two sheds put in one here. Basically, <coughs> oh, excuse me, from this wall here to basically the roof, I don't know, somewhere's, I'm trying to find, right in there somewhere's, there's a lean-to those added on to it. So the original shed itself is in decent shape, besides the tin mist in there. It's just the lean-to is in really bad shape. There's, it's held up by beams, posts. And they're not set in the ground, they're just set. There's concrete coming out of the ground about, I don't know, four, five, six inches, maybe even a foot. It's close to a foot. Some spots, there's just a little curb coming out of the ground. It was poured on top of the concrete floor. And that's what the posts rest on. Well, these steers are hard on these posts. They rub on them all the time, turn them into scratching posts. So a lot of times let's push them off the foundation, then the next thing they come up here in the morning and the 
shed will be sagging in the soft wall there. That's so that wall there will be, or the roof line will be sagging and be, ooh, that's not good. So I would like to take this whole shed down and just get like a Menards building or something, a pole barn or something, even a hoop barn would be nice. Just put up here, keep that soft wall open. So yeah, 100 or so stairs will do that to little sheds like this. I see there's another post over there that's leaning that we just put up not long ago. These guys are rough and stuff. It's all you darn jerseys. Yeah, where am I? There's jerseys in there somewhere. I don't really care for jerseys, for steers. They're a pain in the butt, especially when they're friendly. They see a little hole in the wall, they're gonna run through it. Like I was betting had on the other side of the road where I just was a little bit ago and there's a little hole in the windbreaker before I fixed it. I had to fix it because of this reason. So the one jersey thought, oh, I just finished bed and I opened up the gate so the guys can go around and come back in the pen. He didn't want to go through the gate. He's like, oh, there's a little hole right here. We'll just plow through the windbreaker. So he did. And then there's another hole in the windbreaker, actually where the old silo wall used to be that I replaced with tin because of this reason as well. Another jersey followed in suit. He just plowed right through the silo wall, the old silo wall, and instead of going around like everybody else did. Damn jerseys. There's something else, but I don't know. I just prefer the Holsteins. I grew up with Holsteins. Black and white, red and white Holsteins. That's what I grew up with. We never had jerseys milking cows here. Yeah, here's some Holsteins. These guys aren't the friendliest up here. There's one or two friendly ones I get. 263 right there he's friendly he's just not coming up to me right now but yep i usually don't like the bed inside the sheds i like to keep them out and open but with the storm that's coming it's gonna get cold and it's supposed to rain snow do something it's supposed to be raining slash snowing right now but it's not so there's stuff moving in tonight so we bet inside the shed here, we bet inside the barn on the other side of the road, which we hardly ever do. We try to keep them out of the buildings. Bet the pole shed. Everybody will be happy until Saturday. That's usually when we'll haul manure out if we can. If we can't, we'll just bet again. Wait till the next week. So, yeah. I'm going to put you guys on for now until something else happens. So that's where I was just standing right there, obviously. Here's the bedding pile. It's a lot easier putting the bed pile here, so you can just come in here, the skids here, grab it, scoops, or when throw it in there, instead of coming up here at the bed and spreader and with the manure spreader. I betted these guys a shed, that's the pole shed, it's on the other side of the barn. And they haven't realized I betted it yet, otherwise it would be over there. So yeah, these guys get, I don't know, it's about a five acre, I call it a pasture, it's because what it, that's what it used to be when we milk cows. But it's more than less a lot now, because obviously grass ain't growing. Yeah, corn cribs around here we need to get cleaned up. Throw on in the dumpster there. That's actually our dumpster. We, well, we're not going to throw them in there. We're going to get a dumpster from an iron place once the iron prices go up again. We've hauled a lot of iron out from this farm here. This all used to be full of iron back here. We've got multiple, multiple, multiple loads of crap out of here. Iron. There's still, there's not much around here anymore actually, we got quite a bit cleaned up. There's a lot up in the woods though, yeah. We'll take a quick stroll through the shed here because it's not windy in the shed. I just started this 12 up for the first time in two months, two months, started right up. Cranked for about, it cranked for about five seconds. Boom, she went 886, dad just had this out. He must have went home because he's not here. Meg, no, he haven't ran that for a month. Or so needs a bath, but I gave it a bath before I parked it in here. And then we use it one more time, and it needs it again. But yep. So I don't know. Oh yeah, I also got the grind group bedded down here. This here is the grind group. It's basically a shed just off of the barn. We got the calf barn back. Uh, let's see if I can point here back right in there is a calf barn and the barn's like right in there so once they get weaned off of the calf barn they get weaned off of the milk they get pushed in here 
And this is basically, this is probably their hardest times of their life, is in this shed. Getting weaned off of milk. When we wean them off, we usually keep them in the calf barn for two, three days if they're not old enough. So, yep, bed these guys. They're just, they're in this old shed. This is one of the original buildings of the farm, which, it's in good shape, but there's wasted space here at this corn crib. This corn crib's all rotted out at the bottom. Great, it's got a really good roof and everything. It's just, it's wasted space. So I think what we want to do is take the corn crib part out, pour concrete floor in there, there's no concrete floor in there, put a foundation in there, build a concrete wall here or something, keep it rough, basically so they have more space. You can see there, there's a calf there that has a major ringworm infection, which is, probably comes from the wood walls in this shed, which is why I like to put, I would like to put tin up in here, on the wall on the walls there. But if you, or you could spray the foil too. Spraying out foil will help a lot. But as you can see, I got that sock up there, cattle rubber, whatever you want to call it up. Soak that of oil, drain oil. That usually help a lot too. If they rub on a lot. But yeah, there's only two in here that have it real bad. Otherwise, no one else really has it. So that's good. But yep, yeah, I guess we'll stroll through the barn quick. Alright, scratch walking through the barn. I decided to come up by the pole shed here. So this here is where we have our market steers that are basically ready to go to market. Here, got the steer stuff on the other side of the barn here. The old dairy barn, which is obviously where we raise our bottle calves now. So we basically raise these guys up to anywhere between 14 to 1600 pounds, maybe even a bit more. We don't have a scale, we just go by looks. Like that guy right there, he looks like he's ready to go. Not him, but the one on laying down on the ground there. That's a free Martin. She looks like she's pretty well ready to go. Maybe that guy there too. We judge him by the rear ends, not by the rage. Action, no, that guy, he's not ready to go. He's an old guy, but he just, he's really skinny. I don't know why. He just doesn't like to eat. He's really healthy and all. It's just he doesn't like to eat. So, like I was saying, I like to look at the rear ends. We want them to have big rear ends like beef cattle. That's what they judge by at the markets, stockyards. So that's what we judge them by here. We don't judge it by how big their stomach is or how tall they are, beefy they are. We go by their rear ends. So yeah, there's about 20 or so in here. That's usually about all we put in here. Because that's, otherwise, you get too many guys in here and then they just eat and feed and... Nobody, you know, it just gets to be pain if you get over 20 more. Because it's really, not really set up to feed more than 20 in here. So. Well, yeah, this is where the dairy cows used to be. The dairy cows actually never had that shed. That was more of a summer. In the summertime, oh, let's say this. The only time they were in that shed, the dairy cows, was in the wintertime. Because that was basically a summer headquarters for overflow calves. So. We had hutches out in front of the barn, and once they got weaned off, they'd get pushed in here and then moved across the road and whatnot. Because this shed wasn't set up for the winter time for that stuff. So, yep. Yeah, that water there isn't on. We got another water on the other side of the barn that doesn't, it doesn't have a hot water element in it. That's because it's just got hot water in it. We just run hot water through it so we don't have to worry about putting an element in it. So, yeah. This is where the round barn used to be here. That fell down back in 2017. That was actually a pretty nice barn, other than it fell down, obviously. You can see the rough line where it used to be on the original barn. But yeah. There's a couple guys in here that are ready to go, but we're not going to haul them this week. It's Christmas week. It's, what, the 23rd today? Prices are... Everybody's hauling them right now. And or... No, actually, probably nobody's hauling them because everything's closed, trying to get all their freezers empty for the holidays. But usually, like, the best day to take them is, like, let's see, Christmas is Friday, so probably the best day would have been yesterday or Monday to take them. It's Wednesday today, but we can wait for a week or two. Probably wait till next year to take more in, but until those prices go back up. I think last I checked, the prices around here for Holstein steers. They're roughly about 91 cents to the pound for at least these guys. The mark the finished steers. 
So, yep. I'll let you guys go. It's probably enough rambling on for this video. You're probably getting sick of listening to me talking. Oh, actually, since we're here, I never filmed this, but the windbreaker's back up. I only filmed it when we were putting it back up. Or I didn't even film when we were putting it back up. When we were working on it, anyway. But we got the two posts that broke off at the ground here. We got the bottom of the post pulled out. Got two new posts post put in. Put the windbreaker back up. Good to go. So this is old silo wall. I believe I said that. I don't remember. It's been so long. But yeah, in reality, it'd be nice to put a windbreaker all the way through here. Take down the silos because we don't use them. Yeah. As you can see, the wind's really coming from the southwest right now. It looks like we got rain coming. It looks like Dad's going to Crackle Cracker Barrel to get Mom her Christmas present. Shh, don't tell Mom I said that. She's not supposed to know. <laughs> I'm not worried. This video will be up way after Christmas. So that's what we're up to today. Thanks for watching. I'll flip you guys around. Thanks for watching. Take care. Take easy. Make sure you tune in to the next video. Talk to you all later. Surprise! That's not the end of the video. I have some more clips here. We're going to see the snowmobiles. If you want to keep watching, keep watching. If you want to come back or leave and come back for the next video, you can do that. But this next couple minutes here is about snowmobiles. So let's get into that. Welcome back to Turner Farms, ladies and gentlemen. Today, Dad's in a rush to get the snowmobiles out. There's only two in this shed here. We have, I have my own, and Dad has two. 1999 Polaris Indy 500. The one he's carrying right now is a 2009 Polaris IQ Tour and something like that. That's the newest sled of the bunch. This one here, Dad bought new back in the day. We used to store these things in our garage until we just ran out of room. So we brought them over here to the farm. We got this cool rack in here. It's got a winch up front there. And you just crank it and lift the deck down here up. Lift this one up and they can store another one underneath it. That works for snowmobiles, four wheelers, or whatever. So, we only got two over here. The other one's over at the house already because I bought one this year. So that's been at the house because we've had to service it. And I've already ran it because it's when we had like two inches of snow. <clears throat> so yeah, Dad's taking that one home right now. I'll come back and grab this one. We don't have the pallet forks. I don't know where they are. So we're using the bale fork, bale tines right now, which work. So yeah, that's what we're up to today. And there is an old Articat back there too. I'll flip you guys around. It's an old Articat back here. I've seen things better days. It's a, it's a Panther. That's really all I know about it. 303. It's got a Winkle motor in it, which it's a rotary motor. I have no clue how it works. Other than the only other thing that I know that has a rotary motor, I believe, is a Mazda car of some sort. So yeah, that's what that thing is. That thing's never ran in my life. It's always been in this shed my whole life. We tried getting rid of it for like 20 bucks. We put out by the road and for sale. Nobody bought it though, so... I don't know, we probably just give it away. I don't know, 20 bucks seems reasonable. The motor's free. I had the pulleys sitting on it to start it. Rip cord, I should say, not the pulley, the rip cord. Uh, I don't know much about it. Seen's better day. That's shot. See, it's got a big tear in it. We actually have two of these. Well, we don't anymore. We had two. Then we had another Arctic couch. I don't know what it was. Those two went to the scrap heap because they're junk. This one here we saved. So yeah, this here is Dad's Polaris 500 Indy 500. Really nice sled. It's only got 4,000 some odd miles, I believe. 4,888. Or 86. 4,888. 86. I keep messing that up. But yeah, this is a... We bought this new in 98. It's got a rip in the seat. But this is what I grew up riding. I rode this until... Well, I'll still be riding it this year. But I've been riding this until I just got my new sled this year. Which I'll show that later. But yeah. I basically just want to get my own sled so we could go riding as a family. Because of two sleds, me and dad had to ride on here. My mom and my sister rode on the touring. Which wasn't really fair because I'm double the size of my sister. And me and my dad just don't fit on here too well. So yeah, I bought my own sled. 
we'll see that later. And yes, it's a Polaris. We're all we go. We're Polaris and Honda. Polaris snowmobiles and Honda four wheelers are the way to go for us. And Cup get up lawnmowers. So yeah, that's what we're up to, right, Maggie? She loves the snowmobiles, and she's probably just looking for mice right now too. So yep, yeah, I'll come back to you guys later. All right, so it's been a couple days since the last clip. We got a good, I don't know, five inches of snow now. So here we got the Indy running, the Indy 500. As you can hear, the dogs are kind of excited. They're waiting for it to go. Yeah, it's warming up. Won't take too long. Over here we got my sled, which I didn't show yet. 2006 players. FST switchback, 750 with a turbo, four-stroke turbo. This is a four-stroke, four-stroke turbo, four-stroke turbo, two-stroke non-turbo. So that one Dad bought new back in the day. This one Dad did not buy new. Eh, he bought it used. It's got a lot of miles on it though. Before we got it, we haven't put many miles on it. This one's got like 3,000. It's been taken care of pretty well. So yeah, we're gonna head to the farm now and bed some cattle.